Let's talk about profit. So profit is a term that we use quite a bit in our daily lives. We hear it all over the place. We hear that companies make profit. We have a general idea of what we mean by it. But as with many things this semester, as with many things analytically, once we start looking at things more deeply, maybe, maybe things aren't quite as clear as we thought they were. So we want to think about the simplest version. And some of you from who take accounting classes may know that profit is total revenue minus total cost. Now, those of you who don't take accounting classes should still recognize this because this is, in effect, the same thing as producer surplus. So now we're going to basically introduce a synonym for producer surplus here. So profit is total revenue minus total cost. Straightforward, right? Let's expand this out a little bit. So you have your total revenue, which is price times quantity. Obviously, if you're selling more than one type of good, you're going to have more than one price and more than one quantity. Those total costs, however, usually if we break those down and zoom in on them, we think about total cost as being payments to the factors of production. In other words, payment to the, right, we have, well, what do we have? We have wages, which is payment to labor, right? That's a factor of production. Our workers are a factor of production. We have interest payments. Interest payments are really a payment for credit which people extending us credit allows us to pay for other factors of production. We have maybe the rental rate. And this is, whether this is for machines or, uh, I'm going to just call that capital K there, what we call physical capital. Um, right? So we have these major categories. Don't think there's anything I'm missing. Maybe I am. But we're, this is usually where we think about total costs. And so what profit is, is it's what's left over. It's a residual. It's a residual after we pay for our other factors of production here. So profit is a payment above costs. But of course, Hopefully some of you are saying, ah, I know this word, cost. It's a little bit more complicated than maybe I'm used to thinking in terms of. So maybe let's go ahead and get a little bit more specific. Tell a story. I like telling stories. You know that. So what is cost? Well, cost is your highest value forsaken alternative. So let's take an example where you decide after all of, um, all of your time at MSUB, that you're going to publish a guide for students. And you're gonna sell it. You say, I think there's a, there's a demand here. You're gonna speculate. You say, I think that there's a need for this product and it doesn't currently exist. So I'm going to publish a guide to which professors are good, which are not, which make you work, which don't, which make you work in a productive way and which don't, of those who make you actually turn in work and actually stretch yourself. How do you actually do that in a way that's um, helpful and with the least amount of wailing and gnashing of teeth and so on, right? So you have the idea here. You're going to publish a guide to MSUB. And you also might include a section on how to navigate online classes and how to navigate the administration and all that good stuff. So let's, let's say you decide to do this. So you estimate that you can sell, now eh, you say, you know what, I can sell 500 of these. So maybe I'll, so quantity is 500. And you think that you can sell them, not, not just that you can sell 500 of them, but that you can sell them at a price of $3 per guide, which would mean that your total revenue here is $1,500. Of course, you're going to have to, so that's your total revenue. I'm just going to set that over to one side if I can find my eraser here. So we have our total revenue, $1,500.
You might, of course, say, how do you know that, you know, why do you think this? And we could get into estimating a demand schedule and looking at elasticity and all those fun things. But for right now, just run with me that you think you can, you're pretty sure you can sell 500 of them at $3 a guy. Of course, we think about your costs here. You say, well, let's see here. We're going to need, you're going to be making cop, well, you're going to be writing this up. You're going to be proofreading it. You're going to be printing out copies along the way to proof edit and to get feedback from other people. And so you figure that your computer, to, uh, to use a computer for that time, to pay for the toner and the printer and paper, right? I'm running out of space here, so I'll just put that underneath. But that's going to cost, you say, that's going to cost $87.50. Question, of course, is, so this would be the cost to rent a computer. But if you already own a computer and you own a printer, surely you can bring this down. You can reduce this amount, right? We'll come back to that. Stop and think about that for a moment. Obviously, toner and printer are consumables, but a computer and a printer generally are, are durable goods. So maybe you don't have to spend $87.50. Uh, you might be able to bring that down. Now, along the way, you're going to hire some friends to do some research, maybe, and help you proofread and maybe write some chunks. And you say, so you, you're going to hire two friends, and you say, you're going to pay them $6 an hour. At some point, I should probably update my, uh, <laughs> my estimates here, my numbers. And uh, you figure that they're each going to work um, 25 hours. So, or maybe we do 2 times this times 25. And so that ends up being $300. And then when you actually go to print this up and bind, to bind it and produce the sort of professional version here, you say you're going to have to basically run off uh, 700 copies at 11, let's see, nope. A dollar ten each. You're going to have a few extras here for right losses, etc. And so you figure that that's going to cost you seven hundred and seventy dollars because that's what that works out to, right? And so what this means here is that you have a thousand seventy, a thousand fifteen. See a thousand seventy. Plus, so 1157.50. Yes. And so that means that you have 1500 minus 1157.50. You have, what is that? $342.50. And you say, well, is that, is that enough to get you to do this? Is that your profit? And the answer is no, it's not your profit, because we're missing something. What are we missing? We are missing the value of your time. You using your time to do this is a cost, right? So this would maybe in accounting terms be your profit, but your time actually also matters here. So let's go ahead and add that in and then I'll continue on. Oops, as I lost my Eraser again. This may be an ongoing battle. Maybe I may have to resort. So we're going to add that in. And you estimate that the opportunity cost of your time is $200. Now you could estimate that because that is the other job you could get and the amount you could make in the same amount of time here. This also might be the amount of uh, the, the value that you place on being able to sit around and watch X, watch uh, Tiger King on Netflix. Now, maybe you say, okay, um, maybe you don't have, so what does this do? This brings it down to, so now we're up to, let's see, 50 and 7, 15, uh, what is that, 1357, right? So now we're at $1,357. You say, yeah, but maybe you don't have that kind of cash. Now, of course, you would only really need 
1157, but particularly in this time of tightened budgets, you say, well, you know what, I don't have this much money, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a loan for three months. Um, and so you say, you're gonna, you're, you have enough to cover a fair bit of this, but you're going to take out a loan of $700, and you can get that at 10% a year. So on a non-prorated basis, it's like, right, basically this would end up being, if you did this for three months, a three-month loan at 10% per year would in effect be a quarter, three months is a quarter of a year, 10% of this would be $70, and so a quarter of that is going to be $17.50. And so now we have, what is that? Um, that's 0, 8, 15, oops, yep, 15, 16, 400, 1475 dollars I think that works out double check me we got okay well what if you had your own money then surely right you wouldn't incur this cost here this seventeen dollars and fifty cents what do you think about that I'm gonna well you can I'm going to stop this here just to divide it up into smaller chunks and you can think about that. What happens if you don't need to take out that loan because you have $700? Does your profit go up or not?